If you're not motivated now, when are you going to be motivated? Oh, in a full year. And that lets you save the fuck here. Welcome to a brand new edition of Ageless Energy, where we talk about how to burn fat, increase energy, and balance hormones for women over 40. Over the past 20 years as a performance coach, I've worked with hundreds of women that have the exact same struggles you do. I hope to shine some light with this podcast on what can be the most challenging time of your life and let you know there is hope to find success with your health and what you're looking for. Please share and enjoy. Good morning, everyone. Today we're talking about hot flashes. I'm gonna tell you why I'm qualified to talk about this <laughs> and why a man is sitting here in front of you that doesn't likely experience hot flash. <laughs> and then we're gonna get into some details of hot flash relief, what you can do to help prevent or alleviate and handle hot flashes. I'm excited to jump into the show and um, and see what we find. So. Um, Let's jump into it. I feel feel like it's worth mentioning that we work with, so we work with exclusively women. And then from there, and that's not to say we don't have some customers, we do sell supplements in, uh, and I'll mention that in a second. We have supplements, uh, we do fitness nutrition planning, and that some some of our customers are male that buy our supplements. And that's you in most, sometimes we have outliers, right? But sometimes in most cases, that's the women recommending it to their husbands. But um, in most cases, we work with women almost exclusively, very few men for whatever reason. That's just how it worked out. And then the majority of those, 80%, is for women that are 40 to 60 years old. So what does that mean? This is, And this has been 10 plus years. It's not like I, I dabbled in working with athletes and such, but women have always been attracted to our style of training and teaching for whatever reason. So over the years, we've been having conversations about hot flashes, about hormones, um, about menopause. Like, so this isn't a new or foreign type of subject for me to talk about. So it's actually quite easy. I'm not uncomfortable talking about or answering these questions. So I feel like that's worth mentioning why we're talking about this topic in particular, because we're getting more and more questions about it. So let's talk about it. Let's open it up to the group and um, you can you can listen to our experiences and our information. So when it comes to when it comes to hot flashes in particular, I'm going to t- <laughs> I'm going to tell you some things that you may not want to know, but or may not want to hear or may not want to believe. So it's completely up to you what you take away from this. And I always suggest people doing their own research. If you don't want to believe what I'm saying, (laughs) or if you want to find different information, that's perfectly fine. I'd actually encourage you, don't just listen to me, listen to a number of other people that that offer um, suggestions and have the experience to do so accurately. So, um, and I'm just looking at my notes here, there's a couple things that I'm sure people are gonna be like, not doing that or not not doing that. (laughs) So the first thing that stands out So as a nutrition and a fitness company that also has a branch of supplements. So our supplements, I feel like it's worth mentioning that we don't sell other people's supplements. We don't sign an MLM. We don't, we don't even white label. We don't take someone else's product and put our label on it. We design our own products with manufacturers. So we all, we do, we look at all the ingredients. We have our hands in every step of the process from the very beginning to the end product of um, shipping. So sometimes often they have these companies where you can, uh, someone else, some other manufacturer, or some other company, it's their brand, it's their product. All you do is pay them to put your label on it and they ship it out. You don't do anything. So that's what some a lot of these big name people do. Like, oh wow, had they develop a protein supplement over um, you know, over a couple of weeks. <laughs> Because it's not theirs, right? So, and that's fine. However they want to do it, I just want to let you guys know we're different in that regard. We pay attention to every single ingredient that's in all of our products. So that's when I talk about we're a supplement company. I think sometimes people like kind of take a step back like, oh, are they going to try to sell me? That's not what we're about. This is an information-based show. I'm going to tell you some of the products that we have to recommend and you decide if that if you feel like that might be helpful to you. But when it comes to our like in our individual clients and when we're working with them, we find, and this is through the experience of the, our clients of what they tell us. So often they'll come to us and they'll have extreme 
what it feels like is an extreme hormone imbalance. So their menopause, or sorry, their hot flashes hit heavy and hard. So they're frequently, and they are they're they are more affected at a deeper level, right? So once we start working with them, they'll tell us that their hot flashes start to alleviate a little bit. I'm not going to say that we can eliminate them completely. I can say that we'll alleviate that through a number of different avenues. So I feel like it's worth mentioning the healthier you are, the more steps that you take to help improve your health as a whole, the less hot flashes you'll have and the less um, heavy they'll be, uh, for lack of a better term. So that's the first um, That's the first tip I want you to understand is that you take proper steps to improve your nutrition, to improve your everything, digestion. Your, I'm going to talk about stress levels today. Then that's the first step for you. So if you're not working out, should be working out, right? May not want to hear that, but that's going to help improve your health as a whole and reduce your, um, your, reduce your hot flashes, flashes in general. So so what, the thing is, when it comes to exercise, let's say when we're talking about we're talking about living healthier as a whole, when it comes to exercise, I feel like a lot of people, they're just they're not really sure what to do or how to go about exercising. So, for example, if you're going through menopause and you have hot flashes on a regular basis and then someone's like, go exercise to go burn body fat, then they go and jump on a treadmill for an hour and a half and their face is bright red, they're dripping sweat, they're not seeing results. And then the hot flashes set in and they're like, like right, losing their mind because you're not seeing the results. One, you're not on a proper program, so you, so you're not going to continue to see in, your increase your metabolism and drop your body fat. And then those those hot flashes could possibly be ignited or at a deeper level because of that long duration of cardio. Now, I'm not saying that you shouldn't be doing cardio, and not, I'm not saying that the cardio will, uh, let's say, inflame your hot flashes. But I'm saying that if you're not on a proper program and it's just like go do a bunch of cardio that's going to help you drop drop inches or live healthier. That's probably not going to get you the results that you're looking for. And that's the same with nutrition, right? So I'm going to talk about a few things with nutrition in particular that could possibly make your hot flashes worse or make it better. But if you're following a nutrition plan and it's not specific to you, to your age, to your body weight, to your wants and needs, then that may like your specific calorie count, then you're not going to see the results you're looking for. Like we had someone, uh, we had someone join us not too long ago. I think they're three weeks in and, and 12 pounds, 12 pounds down. And they said that they, they told us that between 40 and 60 years old, they said, I thought I had uh, too much of a hormone imbalance to see proper benefit. I wasn't able to like nothing, nothing seemed to work. Right. And I wasn't seeing the results. So I thought I just wasn't able to lose weight and trim up and burn body fat. And then we put them on a program and they started to feel fantastic in a short amount of time. And that body weight, we increased the metabolism and that body weight and body fat started to melt off. So it's important for you to understand that you should have very specific programming from exercise to nutrition. And often we're just kind of cherry picking different programs for YouTube videos. Or a lot of times, like I see women and I'll say, well, what have you tried? And they're like, oh, so-and-so wrote me a program. And I go and research so-and-so and they're a bodybuilder. So they make bodybuilder nutrition and fitness programs for someone that doesn't want to be a bodybuilder. So all I'm saying is that you need someone very specific to help you see the results that you're that you're looking for. I want to mention MACA here. This is one of my... Um, I suppose more powerful tips. So this is a supplement. So maca is a root, and it's a so it's a superfood. It's an also an adaptogen, and it's grown high up in the Andes Mountains. This superfood, we only get it in powder form. If you find if you go to Peru, for example, you can get the you can actually get the fruit, but um, or the fruit, right? It's a it's a root that grows up higher than the um higher than the rock line. I think it might be the only root that does that. At any rate, you can buy this at health food stores in a powder form. This is great for hormone regulation. It also helps with naturally increasing your energy levels. So why I say naturally is because you can increase your energy levels with caffeine, uh, with refined sugar, with those energy drinks. But anytime you unnaturally put a spike in your insulin levels that increase your uh, blood pressure, there's always a crash. And of course, we run into a diabetic type of issues when we have too many um, blood uh, blood pressure spikes, um, right? Which messes up with our, our our high blood pressure. So you don't want continual spikes, which increase your blood uh, your blood pressure, which where we run into issues, right? So when I say naturally, like a na natural product, like a maca product, that's naturally, it's not going to cause those drastic spikes that are going to cause more issues in your health. Um, it also helps with your libido. So these are three important tips why I recommend maca. It has a bit of a nutty flavor. It's a pow It comes in a yellowish powder. In most cases, they have red maca. And um, that's something that I'd recommend you adding to your shakes on a regular basis and or smoothies. So again, it's an adaptogen. So it fills in in other areas as well. 
well. So you'll see other benefits than just than just those three that I mentioned. Rhonda says, why why would it make my face tingle when I take Maca? I have no idea, Rhonda. I've never heard that before. I've actually heard that Maca helps with complexion. So maybe it's doing something to your collagen or, or skin. I'd also look, I'd also need to look at your meal plan, your lifestyle. I feel like a lot of times people try one thing. Like I had someone say, oh, magnesium makes me sleepy. And I'm like, never heard that before. I, I, it'd be hard pressed. It'd be hard pressed to find research that says that mag magnesium can actually make you sleepy. But that's fine. I don't mean to like that's your experience, and that's and I don't want to downplay that. Like everyone, I want to recognize everyone's um, experience and what you're going through. But I would need to look at a holistic lifestyle, food, stress, etc. I wouldn't just look at um, Mac in particular um, to be able to tell if that's what's happening. Okay, so that's so that's Mac. We got um, okay. What's next? How are you guys? How are we? How are we doing? Is that hitting home for anyone? Has anyone else tried maca? Has anyone else felt by through exercise and improved nutrition that their hot flashes have been reducing? So the next one is stress level. So the the more stress you have, the more hot flashes you have, and that goes to living that healthy lifestyle that we often talk about. So that goes with proper nutrition, proper exercise. You have someone that he keeps you accountable to and keeping your motivation high, so you can complete your exercise and nutrition on a regular basis and that that comes with stress levels right so in most cases we find that people don't eat particularly well and they don't exercise they have high stress levels and that's it's just that's normal right like that's a normal um what's the word that's a normal result so if you look at like highly processed food refined sugar rancid oils um regular toxins additives fillers corns like multidextrins those are going to stress your body out at a cellular level so you're going to naturally be more stressed that's just how it is. The same thing with exercise. You look at exercise, it's the number one way to reduce stress. So people that are eating right and exercising on a regular basis naturally have lower stress levels. So that's why it's important. Like that's why when I talk about this, like the staple of reducing your hot flashes is living that healthy lifestyle through exercise and nutrition. And um, I, I think you'd be hard pressed to just try some of these examples I'm telling you and not try other things through nutrition and exercise to see that holistic benefit of reduced hot flashes or at least at least that such a um such a heavy hit every time you get those hot flashes coming your way shelly says how much maca every day a teaspoon one teaspoon of maca will do it for you um exercise works for me and eating well nadine just jumped in here so she says exercise and eating well helps improve her hot flashes so i mean we'll see that across the board of results if you start talking to people that are in this age range and going through menopause and having hot flashes you take one person that is exercising eating well you take another person and they'll have drastically different hot flash and that's the same thing like that's the same thing with supplements like supplementation we talk to people that are like oh i don't know if supplements work blah 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 if you take two different people and i can and we've been working for it with people individually for over 10 years but take one person that's taking natural supplements clean healthy ones and you take someone that's not the the benefits are like night and day mar says i find if i don't exercise first thing in the morning my flashes are crazy yeah thanks mar and 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 that's uh that's just helping reinforce like this isn't this is our experience experience, but it's not my information, right? This is experience that we've heard from our clients over the years, which I'm hoping to pass on to you. That's what a coach is for, right? Like a coach, a coach should help you with more accurate information and help you get quicker to your answer. You hire a coach to save you time. The problem is a lot of people won't exchange their money. Like you're, you're going to, you either have, you're either money's more important to you or time. And I feel like all of us should understand that time is more valuable than like lose a family member, a family member passes on. You'll re like, we all realize that that time with them is more valuable than anything. So we often keep trying things on our own, try over and over and over again. And um, instead of exchanging your money for time to hire a coach that can help you see the results that you look and that's it. So, okay, so we look at stress, back to my point of stress in particular. So there's different things that stress us out and there's different things that we can do to reduce stress. One of the things that's that's interesting to me and I can see it across the board, like I used to watch this for sports. Like I played um, high level sports. I went through high school, uh, junior college, university and professional. And I would see, and later on in my career, I started to pay attention to a bit more things on a deeper level. So I would see someone get in a fight with their wife, with their girlfriend, with a teammate, get in trouble for management, whatever it was, their stress levels would rise. And it was, it was such a, what's the word? First, it was clear. It was so clear to me what was going to happen 
happened and it was accurate 100% of the time. When someone, like one of our teammates, went through something at a stressful level, they became injured. And I feel like that stress level shows up on the weakest part of our body. So sometimes people are like, oh, I get really bad digestion issues when family comes to visit, <laughs> right? When, um, like that anxiety hits our, some of us, that anxiety, that depression, whatever it is that hits our gut and intestines on a deep level. So we have a, everything's constricted, right? So we have a harder time with the natural flow of things. And then other times we have it on our like knee pain, back pain. Like I'm sure if you looked at um, Eastern or some type of Chinese medicine, the yin and the yang, they're going to tell you that there's a reason, a specific reason why things show up on our body. Um, and that's, in my opinion, that's due to stress. So we don't, the problem is that we don't do things to reduce stress in our life. Exercise being one of them, proper nutrition being, a, being another. Like for example, we're emotional eaters, right? When you are entirely stressed out, what do you do? You go to the carbs, the chips, cookies, um, muffins, donuts. Like, oh, I'm a, like, I hear it all the time. I hear it almost every day. I'm a stress eater. So that's something that needs to stop because you're stressed out and then you're putting um, highly processed foods, toxic, rancid, preservatives, like those things that are going to increase your stress level. So we need to find a different outlet instead of eating those types of foods that are going to cause more stress on our body. Some of the things like breathing, um, breathing exercises, meditation or prayer, writing, um, same, same level as journaling, crafting, knitting, whatever it is. It could be chopping wood. It could be chopping vegetables. It needs to be something that's repetitive, that's relaxing for you so your mind isn't so um, focused on the thing that's stressing you out so much. Right? That's stress in particular. Then as if you're looking for a supplement, you could look at magnesium. So magnesium has over 300 enzymatic functions in the body. It's reducing. So magnesium is an, a natural relaxant. That's why it helps with, it helps with sleep number one because it naturally relaxes you. It helps with restless legs because it can actually relax your muscles that are causing those jumps or those twitches, right? That's why magnesium plays such an important role in your body to not just heal, but to relax. Same thing with your digestive system. Many of our digestive systems are in, are in knots because of the food we put in our body and because of our stress levels. So if you put something like magnesium in your body as a relaxant, it'll start to relax those internal intestines and um, offer a better flow of movement so you're not so tightly wrapped up. Tracy says, drinking my morning protein shake with maca. As I watch this, awesome. I have been taking maca for months now and I've noticed my flashes have greatly improved. Look at that. Beautiful, Tracy. Thank you so much for sharing that. That's, um, it's so nice to be able to sit here and have these conversations with you guys and, and, and have that experience of you guys sharing what's been going on and how that can be beneficial to you. So taking a good quality magnesium supplement is um, obviously recommended. I like to recommend liquid magnesium. That's what we have. That's what we produce. Um, I had someone recently message about a pill. Like, why isn't this pill working for me as it should? Pills are like magnesium pills. In many cases, they're low quality. That's A, they're cheaply produced. They're much cheaper to produce than a liquid. They're more abundantly found. And um, usually they have like oh, silicon dioxide, titanium dioxide. That's the whitening agent, which is a toxin, which makes your pill actually white. Um, usually multidection, which is a filler as a corn product. Um, so it's like those, they're just usually low quality products, unfortunately. And then the other aspect is, is you take a pill, you, you ingest it, right? And it has to be broken down by your di digestive system. It has to go through your digestive tract. And then it has to be uh, rehydrated and then it goes to your bloodstream. It's just more step, right? Like that's exhausting just explaining. With you take a liquid mag that you in you ingest, a liquid, like liquid magnesium, and it hits your bloodstream right away. It doesn't even have to go through your digestive tract for you to start seeing results. So that's the difference. And then of course, we wouldn't add any additives, fillers, or any of that nonsense that you shouldn't be putting in your body anyways. So um, if you want details of liquid magnesium, you can let me know. But that's um, definitely something that you guys should be taking on a regular basis that would help reduce your hot flashes. So, okay, my next tip. How are we doing? Are you guys feeling good about this so far? Is this something that you guys think you can handle? So to recap, you're going to look at exercise and nutrition. Start on a program. <laughs> like, what better time is it to start? And here's the thing is that I know some people are going to be watching this or listening at a later date, but at this time, this is, um, we're recording this in early January. And I feel like it's such a motivating time. If you're not motivated now, when are you going to be motivated? Like, I feel like there's different times in life when motivation comes and it's like the start of the new year and it's a, it's a fresh start and you get to set new goals or new resolutions and worked in more. It's almost like a reset, right? But a lot of times people don't, they don't consider that. There's like, oh, it's just another month or they don't really set themselves up with a plan. They're like, bought a gym membership with no real plan. They go for a couple of weeks and then they're done, right? Like I think, I think clear research shows around 21 days into the new year, a huge percentage, 90% of people have stopped whatever they decided that they wanted to start. So um, we're 
working on a deeper level with our MAP clients. And if you're not sure what that means, it's our Metabolism Accelerator Program. And uh, we're going through our private training of uh, digging deep into how to properly set goals, how to frame your mindset, how to break them down. And like, I know it's not exciting. People don't want to talk about it, but I really feel like that's what's going to motivate you. So if you look at, for example, we're in phase one, many times in phase one is our clients, we put them on a, a weight loss, like a weight loss or a fat burning stage for them to get to their goal weight, right? So we're measuring progress pictures. We're measuring with a tape and we're measuring on the scale more for food, not for accuracy or success of the program because weight is the least actor measure of success, in my opinion. Um, but what, so what happens when you hit your goal weight? Just think about that for for example. You're, you, you're hoping that that scale, especially if you're only using the scale as a measurement of success, you hit your goal weight and then what happens? You stop doing the things where you found success. You stop, you stop showing up to your coaching calls. You stop putting as much effort into your nutrition planning as you used to. Maybe you're not getting all your workouts in because you're not motivated. You're like, okay, I hit this. Or you see people that join a program and they may hit their goal weight and they're like, great. And they leave. And all the steps that took them there have been eliminated because they stopped that program and they go back to their regular lifestyle and they gain all that weight back. So that's not our intention. Our intention is to show you, show our clients how to see results that will last them forever. So once they hit their goal weight, we start to set different goals in their life so they can keep those results and have something to look forward to. If you're always focused on the scale, just think about that for example. Once that's taken away or once your scale is not going to drop anymore because everyone has a, a limit of how much you can lose that's going to be healthy, then what do you do? You have to find the next step. And that's that comes with the goal setting that people don't really want to talk about. But that's for a different subject. Nicole says, literally sweating. Um, Angela says, Matt program is life changing. No regrets uh, on my decision to join. Thanks, Angela. It's so nice to hear that. Angela's down. Can we share Angela? I think you shared Angela shared in a different live, but Angela's down 31 pounds and uh, is doing absolutely amazing. Crushing it. We have tons of testimonials of our people doing really well. Um, okay. Then we go to, we go to a couple things you probably don't want to hear about, but regardless, this is what we found through our research and experience. Um, caffeine. <laughs> caffeine can um, increase the, they can increase your, what's the word? Frequency of, um, of hot flashes. And it can also increase the intensity. I don't know why that's difficult for me to say. Increase the frequency and intensity. That's what, what a couple of these things I'm going to read off here for you. So that's caffeine. I'm not telling you not to drink coffee. People get so upset at me when I start to talk bad about their coffee. Like you have, because you have people like you have another, you have an expert that says ca caffeine's an anti antioxidant. It's actually a health food. And I'm like, it's it's not like it's not it's highly addictive when you get off it you get the shakes like sometimes it's all like how many have you how many times have you heard i can't wake up without my morning coffee like magnesium uh, coffee strips magnesium from your body like it's just not it also dehydrates you like in my opinion it's not a health food but i don't i don't care <laughs> like if you must have your coffee then drink your coffee but you should do things to protect yourself Co coffee also has known to cause digestion issues and and um I like, I'm not putting coffee down. I like to support local coffee shops. We have a good friend that owns a coffee shop. And I understand that if you really want your coffee, then have your coffee, but then you should drink extra water. You should take extra magnesium. You should be prepared for more intense hot flashes and, and accept that. If you're going to accept coffee in your life, then you have to accept the um, what comes along with it. And that may not be the most ideal, but the, the truth of the matter is that like, that's what happened. That's what our clients will tell us. That's what research will tell us. So that's what our experience shows us is that if you're going to consume coffee, especially especially in larger quantities. Um, I mean, I would look at a fair trade coffee. I would look at what you're putting in there, sugar or flavoring. Um, those are like, there's different ways to continue to enjoy your coffee and just take a step back from the whole coffee world of like that white powder junk or the like the refined sugar that you're putting in it and the cheapest low quality coffee that you could find. So there's different ways you can, you can work around that, but um, that's a choice that you have to make for yourself. Nicole says, what if you only have one coffee a day, uh, not pots? and pots like some do. You say pots or pods. I like my coffee. Uh, I limit my coffee to one a day. Look, you can have your coffee. I mean, you can have your coffee. And that's, I hear that often. Like, um, I hear that often. It's, I only have one a day, right? And that's fine.
and that's better than three or four, right? That's better than a pot. But that's like someone saying, I used to, I wouldn't say these are exact parallels, but just listen to my example. Someone that drink, and I've worked with people that would drink a two liter Coke a day. So you have a two liter Coke, Coke a day and think what happens that, that, that does to your bones, to your teeth, to your intestines, to your overall health. And then they're like, okay, I'm only going to have one can a day, right? Like, is that the best choice? Probably not. But is that better than two liters? Yes. So if you're going to have less, better option. Is that is that going to um, help you eliminate your hot flashes? Probably not. Let's be real. Um, Nicole says, oh my God, shit, shit. Uh, okay, let's see here. The next one is spicy foods that I have on the list. So spicy foods, and here's the problem is that spicy foods are really good to help burn body fat. So like that increases your metabolism. And it's like, I don't know what it is. It's like a, it's like a burning inside, right? It can internally help burn your metabolism. And it's it's hot, right? You sweat, you, you sweat from, um, <laughs> you sweat from, um, spicy foods but the problem is is like that internal combustion like that internal flame that which is like where your um where your hot flashes come from that can help intensify your hot flashes and possibly cause them to happen more frequently so i would i would suggest staying away from spicy foods especially if you're going through hot flashes and they're extreme some people don't and you know, you know what the thing is like it's hot flashes are interesting hormones are interesting in particular maybe not interesting Thing to you, but I've done a lot of research around this and had many conversations. And the thing is, is that I got, I got to talk to some people or I sent some invites and some people are like, oh, past menopause. I'm not even close to menopause. It's like a, it's like an insult to be like, hey, are you going through menopause? I'm not quite sure why, but you can have menopause at, at very young ages. Some people hit menopause early. Some people hit menopause a little bit later. The majority is around 40 to 60, right? And even like early 40 year olds are like, no, nah, no, nah, I'm not dealing with menopause, but it, it can happen earlier. It can, it can happen in your 30s. So the thing is like everyone, like everyone's body is different. So that's why your all your bodies need to be treated differently. So that's why we work with our clients on an individual basis of how many calories you need. What are your specific goals to help inspire you, to give you motivation? So um, it's really difficult. Like if you're talking to a group of people and this is general information, right? Like spicy foods, some of you may be sitting here and spicy foods may not affect you at all, right? For to help increase, I'm talking about hot flashes in general, right? In other people, it could be like a, a sweet and you could be like on fire inside, right? Laura says, um, Matt program is the best decision I made for myself. I take my liquid mag every morning and only sip a partial cup of coffee on my work day. On my days off, I sometimes forget to have coffee. And then she uses maca and mag tin in her smoothies. Awesome, Laura. Thank you so much for sharing that. Karina jumped in here and Nicole says, is it best to take mag in the morning or in the evening? In the morning. I know some people are used to taking magnesium in the morning because it uh, helps with sleep. So people are like, oh, I'm going to take it right before bed. It'll make me sleepy that's not how natural supplements work that might be how pharmaceuticals work or antibiotics or however you want to spin that but when you're taking like when in most cases like okay magnesium in particular you're building up stores in your body so everyone has a magnesium level like if you go um to the doctor and you say can i get my magnesium levels checked they'll tell you the problem there is it's not necessarily accurate so sorry for that caveat but if you go and take like if you go and take magnesium and then you get your blood tested, that's different than be like slowly building up your magnesium levels, right? So it's not like if you take your magnesium right before bed, it's not gonna be like, okay, I'm gonna start falling asleep. We recommend magnesium in the morning because of different reasons. Like magnesium is going to give you a natural energy boost. At least ours is our liquid mag. This is what we hear from our client. So you'll have um you'll have a natural boost of energy from magnesium. And that doesn't mean it's gonna keep you up at night. I know this this contradicts itself a little bit, but you also also, this will also help improve your digestion. So if you have magnesium in the morning, you can have improved digestion throughout the day instead of just at night, right? Um, energy boost. And then um, I'm not sure what the other one was. So at any rate, we find more results throughout the day than just magnesium um, at night. And the other aspect is that we recommend activated charcoal in the evening. And then we don't recommend taking another supplement with activated charcoal. We recommend taking that by itself. So you get the benefits throughout the evening, the detoxing, the digestion with activated charcoal in the evening, and then liquid magnesium in the morning throughout the day. Something that well, something else that we recommend is what Laura mentioned, and that's um, magtin. So that's magnesium three and eight. It's the only magnesium that can break the blood brain barrier. So we take this one and recommend taking it in the afternoon, like two, two, three o'clock. That just gives you a mental, it's, it's offers up mental clarity and we're up early working all day. So that helps us. And a lot of times we hear from our customers that say it's really helped with my afternoon crash. And um, with that ability to um, affect a cognitive function, 
function that can help reduce stress as well. So that's another one that that could be of interest for you guys. One of the things I would like to ask of you guys is that some of you know that I don't run ads on the show and don't plan on in the immediate future. So the only ask I have for you is that you help us spread the word so we can help more women burn body fat, increase energy and balance their hormones. And the only way that we can do that is if you can rate and review this podcast. So the single thing that I could have you do or could ask of you is to leave a review. It'll take five minutes or one swipe of the thumb. It would mean the absolute world to me. And more importantly, you could change the world for someone else. As many of you know, there's plenty of women that struggle in this age group for balancing hormones, increasing energy and burning body fat. So if you could help spread the word, that would make a big difference in our life and probably someone else's as well. Okay, we're going a little bit over time. I guess if you guys have to jump, that's perfectly fine. Uh, but there's a few more things I want to talk about here. So night sweats is another one. So night sweats is part of the or the whole hormone uh, menopause uh, hot flashes. I feel like night sweats are just a uh, uh, close relative, <laughs> a brother or sister of hot flashes. I you could even look at it as hot flat or night sweats are caused by hot flashes, right? So you have your hot flashes at night. I want to give you just a few tips here. One of the like one of them in particular is to wear light uh, light. Um, pajamas. So if you're wearing, like, just think about, I know some of this, I feel like some of this is oversimplification or maybe common sense, not to insult anyone, but if you're wearing fleece pajamas and you're going through hot, like you're going through night sweats, what's going to happen? You're just going to be hotter in hot pajamas and um, they're hard to take off, right? Like if you have lighter pajamas and you have a blanket over, whether it's a light sheet or a a heavier blanket in the winter, you can flip that off pretty quick. But taking your PJs off, taking your, your fleece PJs off in the middle of the night because they're soaking wet, that's not as convenient convenient as lighter, lighter weight pajamas. And then if you need just flipping the blanket over or kicking your late leg out, of course. Sue says my first hot flash was when I was 37. It was a massive one too. Thanks for sharing that, Sue. We got Sherry jumped in here and Lisa jumped in here. So PJs, right? Like look at the look at the type of PJs that you have. And many of you are look are watching from a colder climate. So you probably have heavier PJs. If you're going through hot flashes in the evening, I would suggest lighter PJs. And on that same level, I would say make sure you have a change of PJs close. Like have a change of so here's the thing is like we know how important sleep is and we know how difficult sleep can be at this um at this age range so you don't want to have soaking wet pjs from your sweating from your hot flashes and you got to go it's dark or you've got to flip the light on and then you're digging through your drawer to find a different pair of pjs and then you're wide awake right just put them like put a pair of pjs like a, a second pair close to the bed so you can just exchange them and go back in the bed and hopefully fall asleep more quickly and like if you get up you turn the light on you're digging through your drawers then you start scrolling through your news feed and then you're like i don't know i can't sleep what what just happened you just completely woke up your whole system and it's much more difficult to go back to sleep so make it as convenient as possible for you to make the exchange and then jump back into bed and then on that same level, um, uh, so two things. One is a fan, like keeping a fan close to your bed. And if that's not on all the time, so sometimes people like fans for white noise. If that fan isn't on you all night, some people are hot sleeper. Like I, I have two people in my family. <laughs> that are super hot they burn like on fire so um they could they don't but they could sleep with a fan on them and it wouldn't be it wouldn't affect them because they are so hot at night so if you're if you're a hot like if your body's hot and it burns hot at night and you have hot flashes you could consider a fan all the time that's number one and the other thing i was looking at is um cooling blankets you could find blankets that keep you cool at night and that might be nice if you have a spouse like you have a spouse that isn't doesn't necessarily want to be freezing at night but because you're burning so hot you need to be cooler right so there's actual blankets that can help cool you i've actually seen these blankets where they're you know those we had one growing up like an old school kind of heating blanket you hit the switch and it and it heats up oh i have great memories of that cold winter crawl into the big bed hit the switch on who's with me did anyone else have one of those but they but there's um i feel there's there's different blankets where they have different temperatures so you can set different temperatures so maybe you want a blanket that's actually cooling instead of keeping you um warmer at night um okay and the other one was uh, okay, that was my tip with that. I've heard this from a, a number of different people. They use peppermint. So peppermint along the back of their neck to help cool them down during a... And peppermint soothing. It's cooling. It's healing. So pe- a, a drop of peppermint essential oil on the back of your neck when you're going through a hot flash can help cool your body. If you want to level up, take that to the next level. We have a magnesium spray. So magnesium spray, our magnesium spray, most people use for restless legs 
fatigues or a bit of chronic pain in their joints around their knees, ankles, hips. Uh, we have a lot of customers that use our spray for hot flashes in the evening. They put it right to the, right by their bed stand, and then you just offer uh, uh, spray your legs down, or you could. It's just it's just magnesium. It's it's clean. You could spray your back of your neck. Um, to help cool you down during hot flashes. If that's in the middle of the night, you could even do that during the day. Um, if we just have a small bottle that you can pop in your purse or pop in your desk at work. So that could that could be an option as well. So you get your magnesium and you get your peppermint at the same time. Rebecca says, I have a ceiling fan <clears throat> and a fan on the side of my bed on every night, summer and winter. Yeah, so you, you run hot. <clears throat> we have this place we're staying here. We don't have one at home, but there's two fans. There's one, one fan here and there's one fan in the bedroom. And um, we have the fan on at night and I'm cold. I'm like, I'm freezing. <laughs> Cause I don't, I'm not, I don't burn hot. I really dislike cold weather more than most I feel like. But at any rate, we have, we have the, uh, we have the fan on in there all the time and they're not cold at night. So just depending on your, your body temperature and where you're at, uh, you might consider having a fan on all the time. Um, <clears throat> so how, do, how is, I want to wrap things up. I usually try to keep these closer to, to um, 40 minutes, 45 minutes. Sometimes we go over, but I do want to wrap things up here. That's all I have. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful weekend. Have a wonderful day wherever you are. Stay warm up there and uh, I will see you again. Bye everyone.